Hello everyone, back to you to JMA Friday. We're going to have a look at web up here with Japanese and CFS V2 models. This will take us just about to the end of February, the beginning of March. So we'll be going through the final month of the uh, winter of 2017-18 uh, with this update. So we'll begin by having a look at the uh, JMA model and then we'll go on to the CFS V2 and we'll compare the two and sort of see what they're showing uh, for the next month. Uh, later on this afternoon, we will have a video looking at weather next week to 10 days. We've got cold weather coming up next week. Expect to see that reflected within the JMA and CFS V2 output. But we'll have a video this afternoon just focusing specifically on uh, next week's cold weather and the weather for the next week to 10 days. So I begin by having a look at the uh, 500 bit of our height anomalies from the Japanese uh, Japanese model. Um, these are starting off with the uh, pole view down, uh, and then we'll have a look at the tropical and uh, mid latitude view. So this is the uh, North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere around here. The mid latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are round there. And on these charts, uh, blue will be extrapolating to uh, low pressure and uh, yellow, orange and red will be extrapolating to high pressure. The British Isles is just here. Uh, a little bit hard to make out due to the intensity of the colours. So for the weekend, this is, these are broken down to week periods. So weekend takes us from the uh, 2nd through to the 9th of uh, February. Weekend sees that we've got this uh, area of above average heights, which is high pressure, down to our southwest. We've also got an area of above average heights, which is a blocking feature up over the pole. And then we've got this trough um, stretched out through uh, many central southern parts of Europe and also a deep trough into uh, northern uh, America and Canada just here. So it means that the flow and the jet stream is doing something rather like that. We are placed on the cold side of the jet. We're entrenching cold air into this trough. So pretty cold, pretty wintry at times, perhaps, uh, through the week ahead. We go through to week two, and this takes us from the 9th through to the 16th of February. And uh, very little change, really. Still got this area of above average heights uh, well away from us to our southwest. Below average heights are up to the north, and then also to the east of the country, which means that, again, do something like that, flow with jet stream. But again, we are placed on the cold side of a jet. That looks pretty cold and pretty unsettled again as we're going into the second week of February, the 9th through to the 16th. And then we move through to week three and four, which takes us from the 16th of February through to the 2nd of March. And uh, overall, very little change, really. So still with this area of above average heights in the central Atlantic, below average heights over and to the east of the British Isles and southeast, so the flow, again, it's doing something like that. We've got a southerly tracking jet stream we're placed on the cold side of the jet. Uh, and again, I reckon we could be entrenching some quite cold conditions into this trough of low pressure, both from the east and also potentially from the north as well. Uh, now, bear in mind, that's a uh, two-weekly anomaly, so you might have something uh, like week three, for example, could be cold and wintry, and then week four might do something uh, milder. You can never truly tell with these two-weekly anomalies. But overall, the JMA is painting quite a cold, and I would have thought at times, really quite wintry picture uh, for February. So let's have a look at the tropical and mid-latitude uh, view. So the British Isles is in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it with this one. A reminder of the week one, 500 mil of our height anomaly. We uh, like to change the colour. So we have the area of above average heights out to the west. Below average heights, if we come over to this side of the chart, through uh, many central parts of Europe and so the jet stream, is going something a bit like that. It's a little bit wrong, so let's change that again. The jet stream is uh, doing something a bit like that. And again, over here, we're doing something a bit like that with jet stream. We are placed on the cold side of the jet. So temperature anomalies for the week ahead. Again, this is going from the 2nd to the 9th of February, coming out below average for the UK cold and average week, as it is for uh, many parts of Europe as well. Uh, precipitation anomalies, because it's colder, it's also drier. So it's still a little bit wet to average in northern Scotland, otherwise coming out with drier than average precipitation 
in the week ahead. But any precipitation that does fall, a lot of it is likely to be snow. Uh, this is the uh, 500 millibar height anomaly for week two, which is the 9th through to the 16th of uh, February. Again, below average heights are over and to the east of the country. The jet stream is on a southerly track uh, still, so it looks like it should be another pretty cold and perhaps quite wintry week. So again, we see temperature anomalies coming out colder than average, quite substantially so, actually. We're sort of talking about temperature anomalies around two or three uh, degrees below average. So quite a uh, quite a cold week there, to say the least, week two for uh, February. Again, many parts of Europe are coming out colder than average as well. The uh, precipitation anomaly is also going up, so it's a little bit uh, above average with the precipitation anomaly. So you would have thought that week has an increasing risk of snow uh, because it's significantly colder than average, and also we've got above average precipitation. So yeah, that could be a really wintry week there uh, with quite a lot of snow potentially mixed in going from the 9th to the 16th of uh, February. And then we go through to weeks 3 and 4, which is the 16th of February through to the 2nd of March. Very little change. Still with that area of below average heights over the UK and centering uh, to our southeast, above average heights in the middle of the Atlantic. The jet stream does something like that. So again, we're on the cold side of the jet stream and with that trough, you can expect to be quite unsettled. Temperature anomalies are coming out colder than average. All, uh, all four weeks of February look colder than average here with um, J with the JMA model anyway. See what CFS has to say in a moment. But uh, certainly a sub significantly and substantially colder than average month uh, would be on the way if the JMA is right. Uh, precipitation is going back um, onto the drier side. So we perhaps lose the snow risk, uh, but still with cold enough for, for wintry precipitation, of course. Um, and uh, after that very wintry week, potentially week two, does start to turn uh, a little bit drier there into the second half of February. But I, I think overall we have to focus on the temperature. Those are very stark sort of uh, temperature anomalies that we have there throughout uh, February. It does look really quite cold with the JMA. So let's have a look at CFS V2 and see how that compares. Have we got agreement? This is the uh, week one 500 millibar height anomaly from the CFS V2. It takes us from the 2nd through to the 8th of February. And uh, really good agreement, actually. We've got above average heights uh, to our west and also to our north and northeast. We've got below average heights to our south and southeast. And so, obviously, we're going to be pulling in really quite a cold north or northeast wind and this trough provides the energy for wintry conditions so cold and wintry uh, for the first week of uh, february we go through to week two this is the 9th through to the 15th of february <coughs> excuse me and this looks very unsettled below average heights are through the uk and extending down to our south and east, above average heights, pulling back in Central Atlantic, also quite big blocking feature up here. We're on the cold side of the jet stream, the jet's going something like that, probably going a very long way south, actually. So, again, really good agreement between the JMA and the CFSB2, I'd expect that to be... Uh, not only cold, because we're on the cold side of the jet stream, you would expect it to be uh, unsettled as well. There would be the potential for uh, snow, I would have thought, there in the second week of February. We move through to uh, week three, and this is also looking cold. This is taking us from the 16th. 22nd of February, the above average heights are through the central Atlantic. We've got a blocking feature to our north, and then below average heights are over and to the south of the UK. Again, we're on the cold side of the jet stream, and uh, via this blocking, uh, you would have thought we're probably entrenching cold air from the north into this truss. So again, that could be really quite wintry indeed, and cold there as we're going into the third week of uh, February. And then finally, week four rounds it all off. This is the 23rd of February to the 1st of March. And again, we've got this blocking feature to our north. It's extending over towards Greenland and down into the uh, Atlantic. We've got below average heights over into the south of the UK. And we're still on the cold type of jet stream. It's a complicated path, but essentially there's a dip in 500 millibar flow placing us on the cold side 
of the jet and via this blocking you would expect to be entrenching cold air into that trough so an ongoing risk of uh, snow as we go into the half February. These are looking like really wintry charts, I have to say, both from the JMA and from the CFS. This looks like we could be in for a significantly colder than average month, and also, because it's quite an unsettled pattern, potentially quite a lot of snow uh, at times as well. These are the temperature anomalies then. Week 1, the 2nd to the 8th of February, is coming out colder than average for the UK. It's also coming out cold and average for uh, most of Europe as well. And uh, just get rid of that, it's coming out colder than average down across Spain too. But uh, for the UK, it is a substantially colder than average week coming up. Uh, week 2 is still a little bit colder than average. Maybe not quite such a big deviation, but uh, nevertheless still coming out on the cold outside, most parts of Europe are coming out colder than average as well. Week three, the uh, cold probably intensifies a little bit, so substantially cold now. Just around two to two and a half degrees colder than average. Uh, most parts of Europe again coming out colder than average of the 16th, 22nd of February. And then this just carries on to week four as well. That also comes out substantially cold and average by around two, two and a half degrees below average. Most parts of Europe are coming out cold and average as well. Um, both the models are in agreement that all weeks, all four weeks of February are colder than uh, average. Quite uh, quite dramatic developments here with Jeremy Friday this week. Um Finally, precipitation anomalies. So the week ahead is coming out a bit drier than uh, average. So drying, drying cold in week ahead. A precipitation that does fall, though, could be really quite wintry. Then we go to week two, same as what the JMA is doing. It's a wetter than average week here from the 9th to the 15th of February. Because it's also cold, that obviously increases the risk of snow through the second week of uh, February. Watch out for that. We go through to week three, and that one is coming out close to average, so not quite as unsettled, but um, again, because it's a cold week and precipitation, it does fall, would likely to be falling uh, as snow. And then we go through to week four, and uh, that's average, maybe ending up being a little bit drier than average, if anything. So the second half, again, same as what the JMA is showing, the second half of uh, February probably goes a little bit drier, but it does remain cold. And uh, the most wintry week, uh, it looks like it's week two um, for uh, the greatest risk of snow. Obviously, don't take that too literally. These are very um, broad brush sort of charts. And uh, you have for snow, you have to look at sort of um, small scale day to day uh, detail. So, for example, even in week one, where it looks relatively dry, uh, there will be snow through that week. What we can say, though, is that uh, we're in for a really cold February, actually, if this is right. Um, the only caveat I would put on this is that because we have shifted quite suddenly, quite dramatically into a colder pattern, these models might be going a little bit over the top with that cold signal. Sometimes they'll latch onto a pattern and they'll just run away with themselves, run off with the pattern. So it could be that they're going a bit over the top with this. It does look a little bit dubious, I have to say. But uh, maybe we will get a cold month. We certainly uh, are due one, and we're definitely due a cold February. So maybe this is going to be it. Maybe we're in for it a little bit uh, this month. We'll certainly um, find out within the next week or two just whether this really quite, um, quite unusual and, uh, if you like, cold weather quite exciting uh, update whether this actually uh, verifies. I'm a little bit uh, dubious about it, I suspect. First couple of weeks, anyway, will be quite cold. And then where we go into the second half of the month, I think that's rather more uncertain. As I say, these models might be running away with themselves um, with this cold weather. But we should wait and see. And certainly you can put um, this JMA Friday down as probably one of the coldest and most wintry JMA Fridays we've ever done. Because uh, I don't think we have doing January Friday when we did, um, when we had that cold winter for the first winter of Gauss Weathers, which was 2012, 2013. I don't think, maybe wrong, some will correct me, I'm sure, um, but I don't think I was doing January Friday uh, in during that winter of 2012, 2013. So this is probably one of the coldest and most wintry uh, updates that we've had with January Friday uh, since uh, we've been doing it. So, um... This one 
will be one to remember, even if it doesn't turn out quite as cold and wintry as uh, these long-range models are predicting. Right, talking of cold, wintry weather, we'll uh, have a look at that in today's second video update. That'll be with you this afternoon, um, focusing on uh, all of next week's weather. So come back for that then. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.